You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. The championship game has been set for Monday night. Louisville Cardinals will take on the Michigan Wolverines after some absolutely incredible basketball today, this afternoon. And then tonight with the Michigan game finishing up. Got to watch both games here in studio. That's why we have a delayed broadcast tonight. Waiting for the games to be over. Incredible, incredible game. We have an incredible show here for you. April 6, 2013, first edition of the new month. And we got some Canucks to talk about. Month in review for March. And, of course, we'll talk about the NHL, the NBA, and, of course, the MLB now kicking off in full swing. Some Blue Jays talk after their bats awoke after a not-so-very-good first start. But Jose Bautista is definitely for real. We got the Canucks. The NHL, the NBA, the NCAA, MLB, all coming up on the broadcast the April 6, 2013. We'll get our break. We'll be right back. The Caleb Turner Talk Show, Anchor Radio Network. Today, Vancouver Canucks take on the Phoenix Coyotes live on Monday night. Pre-game at 6.30. And, of course, puck drop at 7 o'clock live from Rogers Arena. The Canucks and the Coyotes right here on the Anchor Radio Network. You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. Back live here in the Anchor Ready Network. What a day in sports. I mean, if you're a sports nut, you just got blessed with an absolutely incredible day. I mean, we had uh, action this morning in baseball, and you had the Blue Jays and the Red Sox, if you wanted to tune into that. You had the Texas Rangers and the Los Angeles Angels, if you wanted to watch that. It was on Fox. And, of course, you know, if you're a golf fan, you had the Valero Alamo uh, Open there in Texas, the golf PGA. One week away from the Masters beginning Wednesday. And, of course, you know, hockey beginning earlier today. You had the Winnipeg Jets taking on the, was it Philadelphia Flyers? Yeah, the Philadelphia Flyers. And if you're a tennis fan, you had the Davis Cup action. Absolutely incredible doubles match between Canada and Italy today. Four hours and 28 minute match. It's not supposed to go that long, folks. It's supposed to be about three. Three hours max. And it went an hour and a half extra normal than the average. Absolutely unbelievable tie break. We saw a tennis match of the ages at the UBC Thunderbirds Arena where they had the tennis match. And then, of course, the first basketball game of today, the Louisville Cardinals taking on the Wichita State Shockers. Good game there. Feel bad for Wichita State. Just ran out of gas against a team that definitely was the favorite coming into the tournament to be in the championship game. They definitely were. No questions asked. Louisville was supposed to make it all the way. And, of course, the freak accident last week with Kevin Ware um, definitely had an effect on the team uh, in that game, finishing emotional win over Duke. And then today, you know, they came out a little bit slow to start, and Wichita State put it on there in the second half. And 12-point lead, 16 minutes to go, and 12-point lead, 12 minutes to go, and it just fell apart. And, you know, credit Louisville. They won. And, of course, uh, Russ Smith with 21 points in the game, the leading point scorer for Louisville. They win the game 72-68. And I think the Michigan Wolverines taking on uh, a a very, very good team in Syracuse. The potent 2-3 zone did not work very well in the first half. Uh, The Michigan Wolverines jumped all over Syracuse in the first half. Had a a six-point lead, eight-point lead at half. It got really close. Syracuse never took the lead back, but they got within... Uh, one point? Yeah, they got within one. and But just not enough against the Michigan Wolverines surviving despite missing many, 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 many free throws. Too many free throws. If they lose that game, they shoot themselves tonight because of all the missed free throws that they had. But they survived. Good teams survive even when one of the part of their game is not successful. And we saw that tonight from the Wolverines. Surviving to play on Monday night against the Louisville Cardinals. Who predicted Louisville and Michigan to meet in the Final Four? I know Louisville was obviously probably picked by quite a bit of people. Uh, I myself did not pick Louisville to make it all the way there. 
My bracket was done after the first day. I picked New Mexico to win it all, as everybody knows from last week's broadcast and the week before. So my bracket was done two weeks ago on the first day. That's how bad my bracket choosing was this year. But you know what? I like seeing the upsets like I said last week. The upsets are what I live for. March Madness. And then the Canucks played, obviously, tonight against the Calgary Flames. They were up 4-1 going to the third period. And we'll see if we can get us an update here in a minute. Third period should have started by now. Uh, Alex Edler with a late goal from the Sedins to make it 4-1. Of course, Burroughs from the Sedins. Daniel Sedin has three assists tonight. Uh, so, you know, we're going to do the Canucks month in review. But, again, today was an absolutely incredible day in sports. And, of course, you had the Raptors and the Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks and Milwaukee clinched a playoff spot, so that was also on TV. And for those of you wrestling fans out there, they had the Vintage Collection and, of course, the WWE Experience, which they have every week, so it's it's not like that was a shock or anything special. But again, speaking of wrestling, while well, we're on the topic, WrestleMania 29 tomorrow. And uh, I will not be tuning in due to the cost and the time of the game, uh, time of the event. But it is supposed to be a warm dinger of a WrestleMania, and I know, well, maybe we have some listeners out there that watch wrestling, but that will be an event to be hold, and I cannot wait to see the um, pirated version on YouTube. If somebody can post those on there, that'll be kind of cool to watch. Anyways, the March month in review for the Vancouver Canucks, um, a, a bad ending to the month. Um, the 4 nothing shellacking in Edmonton, that was not a very good way to finish off uh, a pretty decent month up until then. They had the span there towards the beginning of the month where they had four straight losses in which they only got two points out of a possible eight. Uh, they went on a back-to-back -back win, then they lost back-to-back, -back, and then they won six straight. Corey Schneider was absolutely fantastic in March. He was named the third star of the week at one point in there. Um, and Corey Schneider, of course, now has four shutouts on the year after the shutout against... Who did they shut out? They shut out uh, Edmonton in the last game after the 4-0 shutout to them on the previous Saturday. So the Vancouver Canucks, um, you know, if, if I'm going to pinpoint one thing right now that they struggled with most in March was the secondary scoring. They just did not have enough of it. And you saw that even in the six-game win streak, it was quite concerning even in the six-game win streak, even though they were winning. It was concerning, and I said this on the broadcast, I believe, two two weeks ago. Two, I think it was two weeks ago. I said, you know what? The Canucks, if they lose any of these games in the six-game win streak, fans are calling in, and it's not good on the Team 1040. It's not good results. If they lose, you're going to be hearing a lot of uh, trash from the fans. There's going to be a lot of grief that you're going to take if they don't win those games. And the only reason why they won those games is, of course, the excellent goaltending of Corey Schneider in that six-game win streak, uh, only giving up uh, six goals in six games with two shutouts there, Columbus and L.A. Two one nothing shutouts. But again, they did not score enough goals. They only scored four goals one time in that game. That was because they had two empty netters in it. Now, they went out there at the deadline, and they didn't do much. They didn't get rid of Luongo. And again, I said this last week, do not get rid of Luongo. I stay by that. But after seeing what happened after the deadline, I think they should have gotten rid of Luongo. They could have gotten a goalie for him, and they could have gotten a couple players, but Mike Gillis did not try, in my eyes, did not try hard enough. I know they tried to make a deal with Toronto. They had a couple of phone calls, three or four phone calls to Toronto to try to make the trade, but it just did not work out, and instead the only deal that they get is Derek Roy, which, you know what? I said this on one of the YouTube videos uh, from the post-game show of Derek Roy against um, the Edmonton Oilers uh, just on Thursday. I said, is this guy going to be the Vancouver Canucks savior for the 2013 season? Is he going to be the savior? No Ryan Kessler. You got other players that haven't been playing what they should be playing like. You got Yannick Hansen right now in my eyes, still, is the MVP. He's not really doing much in the last couple games, so maybe it was just the March month that he had. He was obviously Yannick Hansen's month. I mean, he... He's got 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points now. And again, the Sedins tonight have had their breakout game against the um, uh, Calgary Flames. Daniel Sedin now up to 23 assists on the year with 3 assists tonight. you got 35 points out of Hank, 33 points out of Danny. Uh, you got Alex Burrows now. He got a goal and assist tonight. He's at 11 and 11 with 22 points tied for the uh, tied for third on the team lead. Um, and you got Hamhuis with a goal tonight. That was a big goal for him. Big goal by Edler. 
And again, big goal by Garrison. So you have three guys, three defensemen getting goals tonight. That's something we have not seen in a long, long time. Defensive scoring has been held at a, at, 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 it's been a premium if you get defensive scoring. Look at last game. You had Kevin Bieksa getting a goal. That was big. I mean, come on. That, that was huge. Kevin Bieksa hadn't had a point in a long time, of course, missing a lot of games there with the groin injury and still struggling with the groin, groin injury, I will point out to everybody if people still think that he's not playing as good as he should be playing. He is still struggling with that groin injury. My highlights of the month, Janik Hansen's outbreak, Derek Roy acquired, Corey Schneider takes full control of the number one goalie spot, and of course he has four shoutouts now on the year, and Pavel Bure returns to Vancouver just there in Edmonton. It seems to me that the relationship between Pavel Bure and the ownership of the Vancouver Connects management, it seems like it is slowly getting restored, and I really think that this is a push towards Pavel Bure's jersey being retired in Vancouver, and I think it is will maybe not this year but next year for sure if we're gonna get technical so that's my highlights of the year or, or highlights highlights of the year highlights of the month of march and so far this month the vancouver canucks one and one losing to san jose 3-2 and beating edmonton 4-0 and it really looks like they're going to beat the calgary flames tonight as they were up 4-1 going to the third period Small version of the month in review you have at the beginning of the month. Of course, the Canucks starting out the month pretty good 5-2 win against L.A. at home ice. And then going on a road trip, uh, one-game road trip there in Calgary. They had a little boo-boo there against the Calgary Flames. That was back when Calgary was actually still in playoff contention. They are no more. That loss against Calgary featured um, a outbreak towards a three more losses for the Vancouver Canucks. It ended up being a four-game losing streak there as they lost in back-to-back -back games in shootouts against San Jose and Columbus, and that would uh, push them into Minnesota with a 4-2 loss. And again, you know, I think at the beginning of that month, we were all a little bit freaked out. I believe a couple of broadcasts that I had back on March, I think it would have been like March 12th, maybe March 10th was one of the broadcasts, maybe March 11th. I can remember talking on the show, you know, like, what's going on here? I mean, like, what is up with the Vancouver Canucks right now? Um, I think it was on the 9th, March 9th. March 9th, we were all freaked out. I mean, good night. Like, what happened? Four straight losses after a 5-2 win against L.A., your rivals. Um, they come, they go to Columbus after be, getting beaten in a shootout by Columbus just the week prior. And they beat Columbus in a shootout in Columbus. That was a must-win for the Vancouver Canucks. You could not lose back-to-back -back games to Columbus in the same road trip. They go home and beat the Nashville Predators 7-4, and then they get shellacked by the Detroit Red Wings 5-2. And then they uh, get shellacked again 3-1 against Minnesota on home ice. This is all on home ice. And then they come back with a comeback win 3-2 against St. Louis. Go on the road for three games. By the way, that St. Louis win was the start, was the first win of six consecutive. They beat Phoenix 2-1. They beat LA 1-0. They beat Colorado 3-2. All those games on the road. That road trip was pretty good. 6-3 to three in goals. And you get those three games. That's all Corey Schneider, folks. 1-0 win at home against Columbus. And then a 4-1 win against Colorado, which featured Corey Schneider getting an assist on one of the empty netters. 4-0 shut out there by Edmonton at the end of the month to finish off eh, a pretty decent month. You see, you got, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 wins on the month. I think that there definitely could have been uh, several more wins. I mean, I look at the Calgary game at the beginning of the month. That's a game that you cannot lose. You cannot lose division rival. You lose to Minnesota twice this month in regulation. That is a no-no, considering division. One in Minnesota, one at home. They don't do very good at St. Paul, but you got to win that game at home. And they didn't. So you got one, two, three, four, five losses in regulation. The managing the losses did not work this month. Two losses in a shootout, plus they had two shutouts as well. So, I mean... It's, it's one of those months where you look at and you say, okay, I think we can excuse some of this stuff, but, you know, that stretch there where they lost four straight, and then you lose back-to-back -back Detroit and Minnesota, unacceptable, and then losing to Edmonton at the end of the four nothing. But that one's excusable in my eyes because the Edmonton Oilers, hottest team in the NHL at that time, coming off a back-to-back -back wins. 
Corey Schneider, 2.16 GAA and a .925 save percentage, 13.73 and 4 right now in the year. That 4 is 4 shutouts. He also has an assist. He's looking to get his 14th win of the year. And I would go ahead and pencil him in for the 14th win of the year. 23 saves for Schneids after the, the two periods, the first two periods in the game against Calgary tonight. Um... You know, again, the Canucks definitely look good. I mean, I, I look at what uh, the shooting for the Canucks and, and what they've done with that. Um, you know, it's it's pretty amazing when you look at what um, the Canucks have done this season. Um, they didn't make very many deals at the deadline, which I think they should have. That's just my opinion. But you look at the secondary scoring. It's it's You look at it and you think, okay, well... The top goal scorers are is now Alex Burrows. He takes over the team lead with 11 goals right now. I don't know what's happened in the third period. Maybe Danny's gotten a goal or Hank or Higgins. But the top goal scorers for the Canucks and the top goal scorers in the league. Look at the top goal scorer in the league. 25 goals. Our top goal scorer has 11. So there's a 14-goal difference there. Even take the fifth guy. Alexander Ovechkin it actually is tied for fourth with Chris Kunitz with 20 goals. There's still a nine-goal difference. So... Our team has not had the goal scoring that needs to be there. You know, you don't see any big blowouts for the Vancouver Canucks except for tonight. Maybe they can put in a couple more and push it to six or seven. Then we're looking at our first blowout win since who knows how long. I mean, they really did not have a blowout win this past month except for the 4-1 win against Colorado. But I think a blowout win is a four-goal win. Not a three-goal win. That's just, you know, an empty netter or something, which we had those. We had the 4-1 win. We had the 7-4 win. We had another 5-2 win against LA. Um, so you have your three-goal wins, but the Canucks have not really had very many four-goal wins this season. You look at Burroughs. He's got 11. You look at Hank, Danny, and Higgins. They have 10 goals. You got Raymond with 9, Hanson with 8, and then you got four guys with 6. And then from there, it just drops down to three. So the goal scoring is basically done by four players, five players. And really, Raymond, he was out of the lineup there for a little while, so the consistency from him isn't as good as what it probably should be anyways. I look at the shots on goal. The guys who were supposed to be leading the team in shots on goal are Burroughs and Daniel Sedin. Adler with 85 shots on goals up there in third. And then Jansen with a close fourth. But, you know, I, I mean, I'll say this again. The secondary scoring just isn't there, but your top goal scores aren't there. You know, I know everybody's like, oh, well, you got one, two, three, four guys now in double digits. In my eyes, that's still unacceptable. You got to have four, five, six guys in double digits. And of those guys in double digits, you got to be pushing 15 goals on the year for one of those guys at this point in the season. We're going to be lucky if we get a 20-goal scorer this year. We probably will not have a 20-goal scorer this year. And I know it's the 48-game season, but 20 goals in 48 games ain't asking much. Especially when you got Steven Stamkos with 25 goals on the season. He's playing for a crummy team in Tampa Bay who probably aren't going to make the playoffs. Um, we'll talk about the NHL later on in general, but Stamkos ain't going to make the playoffs this year, and yet he's still got 25 goals on the season. He's still working hard. You got a team who is going to make the playoffs, who needs to fight for a good position, and you got an 11 goal scorer. That's your goal scorer. We have one of the lowest leading goal scorers in the league. We got to look that up. Who is the lowest? Who, who, who is the team that has the least amount of goals from one guy as your team goal scorer? We got to check that one out. But the Canucks, an average month. Okay, let's be let, let's be real. Nine five two. 9-5-2, and two, that's an average month. 20 points out of a possible... 7-7-7. Um, uh, 32. 20 out of a possible 32. Okay, you know, I mean, I mean, you lost 12. There was a couple of games there where you probably could have squeaked down a couple extra, and it could have been more like 9-3-4 and four, or 10-3-3. Three and three. Then you would have been looking at a pretty decent month. But, you know, for the sake of whatever... The Canucks are in the playoffs right now if it started today, and they are definitely they definitely have the division control with two-point lead, plus the win tonight would put them up four. They do not have a game at hand, as we will see in the NHL standings. Well, after tonight, they won't have a game in hand. They'll be down to ten games remaining. When we come back, we'll talk about the NHL in general, the team standings. 
what the playoff scenarios would be right now, and of course the points and goals stat, ladies. Later on, the NBA and a little bit of MLB. This is the Caleb Tuner Talk Show, April 6, 2013 edition, evening edition, on the Anchor Network. Caleb Turner Talk Show rolls on after this. The national championship game Monday night. Action begins at 6 o'clock of the pregame show on the Anchor Radio Network. You can hear it live right here on the network. The Louisville Cardinals will take on the Michigan Wolverines for college basketball's biggest, biggest game of the year. It's the National Championship game live right here on the Anchor Radio Network. We're back live. The Keel Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Second segment tonight here, April 6, 2013 on a partly cloudy night. The Vancouver Canucks finished off the Calgary Flames 5-2. Both teams getting a goal there in the third period. Henrik Sedin with the empty netter. To wrap it up, a shorthanded empty netter. So that's the Canucks' first shorthanded goal of the year. I think so. I It's obviously not a natural one, but... So Hank now up to 11 goals on the year, and the Canucks get the second win of April. They're now 2-1. and one. By the way, just for those of you who are wondering, the Henrik Sedin goal was unassisted. 11 goals on the year, now tied for the team lead with Alex Burrows, and Henrik Sedin now up to 36 points with the team lead. Just, I think he's 20, yeah, 20 points back of Sidney Crosby for the Art Ross race. Obviously, he's not going to win the Art Ross. Sidney Crosby might, although he is hurt. After having the jaw surgery to repair that, uh, all the teeth that he lost there in the game against the Islanders, that blast from the point from his own defenseman, was it Miskinen? I don't, I, I can't really remember, but. Sidney Crosby is out, so that might give Steven Stamkos or Chris Kunitz a chance to win the Art Ross. Maybe. Martin St. Louis possibly to win Patrick Kane, but that's if Kane is, that's if Crosby's out. And he might be, he might not be. The standings as of before uh, we went to air, which was earlier, about 7.40, no, 8, 8 something. But Pittsburgh Penguins first in the East with 58 points, 9 games remaining. The Montreal Canadiens second with 53 points and 11 games remaining. I believe they're up to 55 points now with 10 games remaining with the win tonight, their 25th win of the year. The Winnipeg Jets win today. They now got 40 points on the year with eight games remaining. That is first place there in the Southeast Division. And they would have to absolutely collapse to not win that division now. Uh, but, well, actually, no, they wouldn't because the Washington Capitals are right there. I did not. I forgot about Washington. Washington does have 38 points. Just two points back. And Winnipeg only has eight games. Washington still has 11 games. So Washington has the advantage. I take it all back. Boston, 12 games remaining. They are in fourth with 52 points. They are in a very, very good position there to win that division, uh, which would be the Northeast division. Montreal does know how 55 points. And no, Boston has 11 games remaining. I take that back because Montreal beat Boston today in the game. Thanks, Bob, for that little reminder. So Boston down to 11 games and Montreal down to 10. And a big, big win for Montreal with the 50. Five points now on the season. Just three back of Pittsburgh there for first in the East. It is reachable considering the Penguins now are Crosby-less. Um, but, I mean, come on. They got Jerome McGinley and Brendan Morrow. So, I, I'm surprised. Toronto Maple Leafs win tonight. So, now they are up to 46 points. I think the only the only thing that they really can do... Um, uh, th they aren't going to win the division. I think we can all make that very, very clear. They are not winning the division. I think the best that they can finish is fourth. Uh, and even then, that's going to be pushing it because Ottawa's right there. So they could potentially get fifth. Um, the Rangers there in seventh. The Islanders in eighth. Of course, Ottawa's in, in sixth. So right now, if, it, if the playoffs started today, you'd have Pittsburgh playing the Islanders. You'd have Montreal playing the Rangers. You'd have Winnipeg playing the Senators. You'd have the Bruins taking on the Maple Leafs. At least there's only one Canadian match up there because we really the ideal situation is to have all the Canadian teams not playing each other in the first round second round okay but at least get the Canadian teams a chance to get into the second round 
We want Canada represented this year in the playoffs, and it looks like this year we're going to have four teams, possibly in the East. It, for sure, probably three. Of course, Ottawa has the uh, five-point cushion now on the Devils because the Devils lost against the Maple Leafs, so it is at least five. And, of course, the Maple Leafs with 46 points is seven-point cushion on the Jets. And Montreal, well, <laughs> they'd have to choke to not make the playoffs there. With the division lead with 55 points, just three back of first in the East. And five back of first in the league. We move to the Western Conference, the Chicago Blackhawks. And by the way, we might as well go ahead and update the Vancouver Canucks now with their 21st win. Ten games remaining left on the season there with 48 points now. And the Calgary Flames basically are eliminated there with their 14th straight road loss. Or was it 13? One or the other, it's pretty bad. Chicago Blackhawks, 28-5-4. By the way, I forgot to mention this. The Pittsburgh Penguins still have not lost in overtime or shootout. They're 29-10 and 10 with nine games remaining, 58 points. That's pretty crazy. So they haven't even managed their losses yet. So imagine if they manage their losses, the Chicago Blackhawks and the Pittsburgh Penguins are both being for the President's Trophy. And, of course, the Anaheim Ducks are sticking around and Montreal sticking around, but we'll see about that. Anaheim 25-8-5 and five with 55 points. The Canucks now seven back of them. I guess it is still reachable technically. Um, with 10 games remaining, and you don't play Anaheim, I, do, I, I don't I do think the Canucks play Anaheim um, the rest of the season. I believe they're, are they done playing the Pacific Division? Bob, do you want to look that up for me? Um, let's see here, you got the Canucks playing in Calgary on Wednesday. Uh, they play at Colorado with a noon game next Saturday. Uh, skipping ahead here, you got the Canucks at Dallas on the 18th. That's going to be a good game. And then the Canucks... Um, at home against the Red Wings on the 20th, that will be a classic. And, of course, the Canucks and the Blackhawks at home on the 22nd. Um, they do play Anaheim on the 25th of April. My birthday, just for everybody out there, April 25th. Well, hey, that's actually uh, that's kind of cool. Canucks and Ducks, April 25th, 2013. And then, of course, the Canucks at Edmonton on the 27th. I should have known that, but hey. That game on the 25th could potentially be winner take second place in the West. That could potentially be a huge, huge game. They both have the same amount of games remaining left on the season, so the Canucks took that game that they had in hand in Anaheim and stuffed it in their face. And now they have a four-point lead on Minnesota for the Northwest Division, more importantly in my eyes, the Northwest Division. LA Kings, 47 points, fourth in the West. San Jose Sharks, 46 points, fifth in the West. Look out for San Jose. I mean, they have absolutely come on with a vengeance. Of course, they beat the Canucks 3-2 back on Monday at the Shark Tank. They're the HP Pavilion. Of course, Minnesota in 6th with 44 points. The Wings in 7th barely escaping Colorado last night. That tells me they ain't going nowhere. I was actually talking with one of the uh, Detroit Red Wings um, analysts uh, there in the Motor City. And he was saying, you know, it really, really hurt when we lost Lichstrom to retirement. Of course, Ruslan Soleil getting killed in the car, uh, the plane crash there um, with, uh, was it Locomotive? Yeah, Locomotive. And, you know, it really, really hurt the Wings defensively and to have to barely squeak past Colorado. That's bad. Especially seeing how the Colorado Avalanche are worst in the league. We got the St. Louis Blues in eighth. Man, St. Louis has crashed, like literally have crashed. Now, they still have 12 games remaining. Although I think they played tonight, so they would have 11 games remaining, and I do not know the outcome right now. 42 points there in 8th, Edmonton. Edmonton looks good. They may may pull it out. I don't know. Ninth and 10th, Edmonton and Colorado with both with 10 games left. They have identical records, 16, 15, and 7 for Edmonton. 16, 15, and 7 for Columbus, both with 39 points. The Phoenix Coyotes, 16, 15, and 6 with 38 points. They actually still have a chance to make the playoffs, which is amazing. The Predators not having a very good season this year, 38 points, four back of a playoff spot, plus only nine games left. So the Blues with two games at hand on Nashville. The Dallas Stars, 13th with 20, 30, 37 points. 11 games remaining, maybe 10 uh, if they played 2-9. Of course, the Canucks still have several games against Dallas left on the season. Um, so I think the identical situation right now, you'd have Chicago playing St. Louis, you'd have Anaheim playing Detroit, you'd have Vancouver and Minnesota, division rival, you'd have LA and San Jose, division rival. In fact, actually, you'd have uh, three of the four matches would be in our division. Chicago, St. Louis... Uh, Vancouver, Minnesota, and L.A. San Jose. 
Um, so you got a lot of division battles there. And potentially a matchup, you would have Chicago playing Edmonton or Chicago playing Columbus or Chicago playing Phoenix. Chicago could potentially play Detroit, which is definitely possible. Um, that's about all the situations right now that could be flip-flop. Of course, Minnesota, you know, we don't want them winning the division, but you could potentially have Minnesota. It's probably going to be like Minnesota-Vancouver in the first round. Unless Detroit, Detroit could squeak it out. They're only one point back of Minnesota. They do have one game uh, in the negative to Minnesota. Minnesota does have a game at hand. So, I mean, there's still so many different playoff scenarios. Basically, everybody now has at least 11 games left or 12, 12 or 11 games remaining uh, or under. Uh, Winnipeg only has eight games left on the season. Uh, so they have the least amount of games left on the season. Point leaders, Sidney Crosby with 56 points, Steven Stamkos with 48, Chris Kunitz with 46, Martin St. Louis 46, Patrick Kane with 44, Rocket Richard Ray, Steven Stamkos 25 goals, John Tavares 23, Jeff Carter 22, Chris Kunitz 20, and Alexander Ovechkin has come out of it with a vengeance with 20 points, trying to push his team into the playoffs. It's definitely reachable. Only two points back and 11 games remaining. The Capitals are coming on with the push to the playoffs in sight. And you know what this is setting up. We all know what this is setting up for a first round in the Eastern Conference. If Sidney Crosby gets healthy, and Washington gets that eighth seed. You're going to see Sidney Crosby playing Alexander Ovechkin first round of the playoffs. Oh, baby, I cannot wait for the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. It is going to be an absolute blast. In the West, the Canucks in the Wild, that'd be a nice match. I wouldn't mind seeing the Canucks in the Wings. That'd be kind of cool, too, considering we have a lot of Red Wing fans in our church. That would definitely be fun, although we have not played very well against the Wings this year, so... Maybe not. Maybe we don't want to play the Wings. Maybe we want to wait to play the Wings in the second round, which actually right now, what it's setting up is, okay, let's say all the top seeds win. Chicago, Anaheim, Vancouver, LA, which I think the only uh, definite upset right there that you would see would probably be LA, San Jose. I think that one can be flip-flop. So let's say San Jose wins. You're going to have Chicago playing San Jose. You're going to have Anaheim playing Vancouver in the second round. That is a rematch. Anaheim-Vancouver, that is a rematch of, I believe, four or five years ago, the 07-08 season in which the Anaheim Ducks beat us in six games, four to two. And they eventually went on to win the Stanley Cup. And, of course, that is the uh, one of the three teams that has eventually gone on to win the Stanley Cup that has played us. I had Chicago. Actually, no. That is the... One of four teams in the last five seasons, six seasons, five seasons that have gone on win the cup. You have Anaheim, you have Chicago, you have LA, you have Boston. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. When we come back, a little bit of NBA talk, a little bit of MLB. The Vancouver Whitecaps squeaked down a draw down in San Jose. 1-1 one, one draw. They were down one nothing. They get the tying goal there in the second half. So 1-1 one, one there. The NBA next. The playoffs are right around the corner, by the way, in the NBA. The Miami Heat have played 75 games, so they only got seven left. So they'll finish just before the NHL. The Lakers, a half game up on Utah. It is going to be close in that Western Conference. It's going to be the fight for eighth place. It is definitely going to be the fight for eighth place. I don't think LA can get seventh. We'll talk about the NBA when we come back. We'll get a break. The Anchor Running Networks, Caleb Fanner Talk Show, rolls on after this, April 6, 2013. We'll be right back. The Vancouver Whitecaps take on the Real Salt Lake FC next Saturday, April 13th. Coverage beginning at 1 o'clock on Anchor Radio Network. And, of course, the Vancouver Canucks at Colorado next Saturday. That can be heard on the sister station, the Anchor Liberty Radio Network. The Vancouver Whitecaps and the Vancouver Canucks next Saturday on the Anchor Radio Network and the Anchor Liberty Network. We're back live in the Anchor Radio Network's Caleb Turner Talk Show last segment. We're going to talk some NBA and MLB. The Oklahoma City Thunder have definitely proven to the league. And the San Antonio Spurs have definitely proven to the league that they are definitely contenders. But I think the favorite right now is going to be the Miami Heat. I mean, come on, why not? 59 and 16. It's got to be the favorite. I mean, hello. 
Big game tomorrow afternoon, I'll tell you that. Big, big game tomorrow afternoon. Especially for the Lakers. Clippers technically get the the home game tomorrow. But it'll be neutral site for both teams. Down there at the Staples Center, 12.30 start time tip-off there. Lakers at Clippers. I almost think that this is a must-win for the Lakers, even though that there's still quite a bit of games left, and you know the Jazz are definitely breathing down the neck. I'm looking for Kobe to have a game where he just lights it up. Absolutely lights it up. I'm talking, you know, close to 40 points lights it up. They haven't needed that, though, in the last several games. I mean, you look at the last couple of games that they've won. I and mean, we're talking about, you know, the game against Memphis, especially the game against Memphis. Look at Memphis. They're fifth. Fighting for fourth. They beat the fifth-place team who is severely better than the Lakers. The Memphis Grizzlies are severely better than the Lakers. But this is something that you can take out as a Lakers fan that maybe the Lakers are going to turn the corner. Maybe they're starting to get that fifth wheel, fourth gear, third gear, fifth, sixth gear, or you know, second, third, fourth, fifth win in the season where they're actually going to start making the push for the playoffs, and this is how they're going to play in the playoffs against the teams that are going to be way better than them. You know, who do the Lakers want to play? Do they want to play the Thunder, or do they want to play the Spurs? Either way, you're playing a team that is severely better than you. Guaranteed. And you're going to need Pau Gasol, you're going to need Dwight Howard, you're going to need Kobe Bryant, you're going to need Meta World Peace, you're going to need Ron Artest, whatever, you're going to need Steve Nash, you're going to need Jason Blake, you're going to need Earl Clark, you're going to need all those guys to step up to the plate and play their hearts out down the stretch to get into the playoffs, maybe even get 7th because you do play the Houston Rockets late, and that could be a potential 7th place matchup, who knows, and maybe even 6th, I mean they could get 6th, who knows. You know, Golden State could choke down the stretch. So the Lakers right now, I think tomorrow's game is a must-win game. But for the Clippers, it's must it's a must-win game. The Clippers went fourth and maybe even win the division. The Clippers are trying to win the division to get home court for sure in the first round and possibly in the second round. But they are definitely fighting for fourth place because Memphis and the Clippers are duking it out. Now, I know all those guys have clenched a playoff spot. Boy, I'll tell you in the East. I mean, we're talking the West right now, but the East is crazy. All eighth places have been locked up in the playoffs. Not sure about who's going to play who yet. It looks like Miami's going to play Milwaukee in the first round. <laughs> Milwaukee is 37 and 39, and they're going to make the playoffs. The West, no teams under 500 in the playoffs. And the top nine, the top nine are above 500. The Miami Heat, 59 and 16. The New York Knicks, 49 and 26. The United Pacers, 48 and 28. So those two places right there are subject to change, second and third place. But the Knicks, the way the Knicks are playing right now, 11 straight wins, they ain't going to be beat. It's going to be tough to get the second place. Brooklyn, 43 and 32. And of course, Chicago right there, 42 and 33. They could flip flop the fourth and fifth. Atlanta, 42 and 35. Again, that's another place that could flip flop, but the Bulls do have two games at hand on Atlanta. So that's big. The Boston Celtics, they'll probably get 7th with 39 and 27. Can't see much change there except for maybe getting 6th, but that'd be, that'd be a miracle. 39 and 37 are the Celtics. I mean, Milwaukee could catch them. I mean, I don't know. That's going to be pushing it. Back to the West, you got OKC, San Antonio, Denver, your division leaders. They've all clinched a plus one. Of course, the Clippers and the Grizzlies have as well. Golden State, 44 and 32. Houston, 43 and 30, 43. 43 and 33. Wow, 10 games above 500. The Lakers, 40 and 36. Remember at the time when the Lakers were like three and four games below 500? And everybody's like, oh, the Lakers ain't going to make the playoffs. And then Kobe came out and said, we will make the playoffs. And look at them now, 40 and 36, four games above 500. The Utah Jazz, though, right there, 40 and 37. And the Dallas Mavericks, well, yeah. They're going to probably have to draft Brittany Griner. <laughs> I thought that was so hilarious. Mark Cuban comes out and says, you know what? I may draft Brittany Griner next year. One of the only women in the WNBA who can dunk. 
Kevin Durant leading the league, 28.4 points per game. Carmelo Anthony, 28.3. Kobe, 27 on the dot. LeBron, 26.9, just .1 back. He hasn't played the last couple games, though. Miami is still good even without LeBron, without Wade, without Bosch. Look at that game where there was no LeBron, no Wade. Did you guys see that Chris Bosch buzzer beater to win? That was sick. It was nasty. And James Harden rounding out the list with 26 points per game. The NBA, the, the, the NBA definitely, definitely still up for grabs. Just a couple of places. Miami's definitely going to have uh, first in the East. Maybe get first in the NBA. It's close. OKC's right there. But I just cannot see uh, Miami losing first place in the league. It's going to be good. The NBA playoffs are going to be good. The NHL playoffs are going to be good. I'm looking forward, obviously, to Monday night, the NCAA tournament national championship game, the Louisville Cardinals versus the Michigan Wolverines. Our Michigan Wolverines, the only team in um, Michigan that I cheer for. The only team, Michigan. Moving to the MLB, just some records here for you in the American League. 3-1 and one Baltimore, 3-2 and two Oakland, 3-2 and two Chicago White Sox, 3-2 and two Boston, 3-2 and two Detroit, 3-2 and two Texas. Moving to the NL, Washington 4-1, and one. Colorado 3-1, and one. that's a shock. Atlanta 3-1, and one. Arizona 3-1, and one. Cincinnati 3-2, and two. the Mets 3-2, and two. and San Francisco 3-2. And, and that was of just earlier this afternoon. And some stats here for you. Do we have the stats? Do I have the rest of the MLB stats? Yes, I do. The Seattle Mariners, I don't know if anybody realizes, but they do have a gun on their team this year. Michael Morse already has four home runs in the first five games of the season. That's pretty good. And he's shucking everybody up. Chris Davis, four home runs for Baltimore, J. Pierre, and Sebia for the Toronto Blue Jays, three jacks. By the way, the Blue Jays started out really, really rough. 0-2, they won the third game, or no. Yeah, they lost both games and they won. Mark Beerley got the win. Right? Yeah. No, no, he didn't get the win. He played great. They lost it for him, but they ended up getting the win anyways. Blue Jays a little bit shaky um, to start the year. That's okay. You know, new team, new look. It's going to take them a little bit. See, here's the thing. In the MLB, you can't say new team. New players trying to get used to each other. You can't say that. Because in the MLB, it works differently. You hit the ball, it's just you. Where in the NHL, it's a team game. In the MLB, it can be about one player going on a streak or one pitcher going on an absolutely incredible streak. It's not necessarily about the team. You know, yeah, you want to try to get the win, but in you know the NHL, you pass the puck to get a goal. In the NBA, you pass the ball to get to make a shot. In football, you pass the ball to a, to a wide receiver. If you get your wires crossed, you're going to throw an interception. It's going to go back the other way. You know, in tennis, when you're playing doubles, there's a lot of communication when you play doubles in tennis. And we saw that today at the Davis Cup, Canada versus Italy. Absolutely incredible. And, of course, the singles matches will be tomorrow, and Canada could potentially get to the semifinals. Canada looks good. If they can get to the semis, oh, my goodness. They've already made history getting into the quarters. They're going to make tons of history making it to the semis if they can. Serena Williams, one last note. Serena Williams beats her sister Venus Williams today in the championship. I, I, it's kind of funny. I do not know what the championship I think it was the Sony Open. But Serena Williams beats her sister for the fourth consecutive time. I think it's time for Venus to hang up the cleats. I just think it is. And, of course, tomorrow, WrestleMania 29. Those of you who want to pay the 60 bucks to watch WrestleMania, well, I feel so bad for you flushing your money down the toilet, even though it is going to be an incredible event. You will be entertained tomorrow night, guaranteed, MetLife Stadium, expected over 60,000 fans and over a billion dollars in revenue just from this one event is the WWE. They are expecting that much. That concludes today's broadcast, April 6, 2013. It was probably one of the best days in sports in a long time. Absolutely incredible day. You had the Canucks winning. You had the Whitecaps getting a draw. You had the Michigan Wolverines winning. You had the Louisville Cardinals winning. You had Canada winning the Davis Cup. You had Texas and Los Angeles also on TV. You had the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. You had the Montreal Canadiens taking on the Boston Bruins. You had the Toronto Bl Maple Leafs taking on. You had the Blue Jays too taking on the Red Sox. You had the Maple Leafs taking on um, the New York Jer the New Jersey Devils. Um, just an absolutely incredible day in sports. You had curling. You had semifinal uh, play there in the men's world championship. The final will be tomorrow. I do not know who won. I believe Canada and Denmark were playing each other today. So if Canada won, they're into the final, but we'll see about that. Just an absolutely incredible day of sports. Thanks for joining us. Stanley Caleb Turner Talk Show next week will be the 7th. 17th edition will be next week, correct? Yes, yeah, 17th edition next week. And, of course, we're pushing toward the 20th edition. Hopefully next week we'll have our NFL insider, Phil Davis. He was unable to join us this week. They were on a, a special 
uh, was it a short vacation, Bob? What was that? No, he was just unable. Okay, so he was not on vacation. Okay, I thought he was just taking a vacation. It's to say he couldn't be on the show today. But anyways, thanks for joining us, the Kim Twitter Talk Show. Then the Anchor Radio Network will be back next week. Thanks for joining us today. Stay safe. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the game Monday night. It's going to be an absolutely incredible game. Womdinger, the Louisville Cardinals, taking on the Michigan Wolverines for the NCAA National Championship live from Atlanta, Georgia. We'll have the broadcast right here on the Anchor Radio Network. Thanks for joining us. The Caleb Turner Talk Show, Anchor Radio Network. You have been listening to a presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in every Saturday for a new Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network.